Smart shopping campaigns use machine learning to show ads for your products based on search relevance and the user's intent. Instead of using manual CPC, smart campaigns use maximized conversion value or target ROAS for bidding. Smart campaigns remarket on the display network, search network, YouTube, and Gmail. Google Smart Campaigns do all the heavy lifting and are very hands-off so you can set them up and check on them routinely. Smart Campaigns that are set up correctly and optimized can become very profitable. From one campaign, you can run targeted ads and remarketing ads sending new and old users back to your product pages. While Google runs your ads, you can spend more time managing other important aspects of your business. On the other hand, if you are more of a hands-on type of person, you might find that smart campaigns are limited and offer a lack of control. A few examples include not being able to add negative keywords or view a search terms report. You can't adjust bids by product group and you can't add product modifiers. Even then, you can still use smart campaigns strategically to enhance your overall account performance. Before we begin, make sure that your conversion tracking is working correctly and ensure that your remarketing tag is installed correctly as well. The most basic type of setup for a smart campaign is to have all of your products in one product group and let Google handle the rest. While smart shopping campaigns do a great job of getting your products in front of the right audience, you can still use one of the following strategies to get even better results. A simple yet effective method is to subdivide by brand. This way you can allocate different budgets to different brands based on their margin. High margin products will have higher budgets and lower margin products will have lower budgets. To do this, create a new smart shopping campaign in Google Ads and then under the subdivide all products by select brand. Once you've selected your brand, you'll want to confirm that all other products are excluded from the campaign. You can check this by going into the product groups of this smart campaign and you'll find one called everything else in all products. Make sure that in the max CPC column you select excluded. This will ensure that only the products that are within this brand will show ads. The next method we're going to talk about is to subdivide by profit margin using custom labels. This method does require a tool such as the Sales and Orders app feed tool in order to manipulate your feed directly and be able to add other fields. In this case, custom labels. Since we are subdividing by profit margin, we do recommend that you have at least three custom labels, high, medium, and low to reflect the different levels of margin. Once you've added the custom labels to the respective products, please make sure to submit your feed to Merchant Center before continuing on to the next step. Now that your feed is updated, setting up the campaigns follows the same steps as the previous structure, only you're choosing a custom label rather than brand. Create a separate campaign for each custom label that you made and make sure to name it accordingly. One more thing to remember is to make sure to go back into the product groups and make sure that the everything else in all product is excluded. In the next method we're going to go over, we're going to create separate campaigns for high performers and another one for low performers. We define poor performers as products with high spend and no conversions or products with high impressions and really low click-through rate. For this method we'll be creating two campaigns, name them accordingly, and both will be subdivided by item ID. The top performers campaign will have all the products active while the low performers will have all products excluded. The idea here is to run your campaign with all products 
to collect data over time and then move products that are underperforming into the low performers campaign. In the low performers campaign, you'll set the target ROAS to 2000% or higher. This will ensure that the ad spend for this campaign is low as you gather data and begin to find low performing products, you can begin to exclude them from the high performers campaign and activate them in the low performers campaign. A few other best practices are to clean up your data feed. Your data feed is super important. This is where Google gets all the product data to make sure that you come up for the most relevant searches. One main thing is to heavily focus on your titles. Optimize your titles as best as possible. Make sure to include all the important keywords, but always make sure that it reads naturally. Another thing you can do is to complete all relevant fields. Even though some of them are optional, such as color, material, age group, etc. Even with the power of machine learning, there are always ways to squeeze out just a little bit more. You can have your best sales yet with the help of these time-saving campaigns. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and please subscribe to stay up to date on everything e-commerce.